Hello Game of Thrones fans and welcome back to Night of the Blackwater. I'm your host as always Ben and this is our round 2 game from the European Championships. Uh, on the left we have Hector playing Stark Fealty and on the right we have Ashley playing Baratheon Lord of the Crossing. I say both these chaps are 1 and 1. Do not want to know sorry? And it uh, looks like they are ready for setups. Um, Hector, I believe, is from uh, Greece. Whereas Ashley is um, one of the, from, I believe, the London Metas. So Hector looks like he's got a four card setup. And Ashley's gone for the three cards, so, or four cards as well. So we have a Butterbumps, a. Uh, God, I'm gross. <laughs> Lives. Uh, so Lise. Baratheon, there we go, managed to get in the end, a drag same faithful in a King's Road. Yeah. Up against a Mesa Lowen, a uh, Winterfell Steward, a Great Hall, and the Gates of Winterfell. Uh, very interesting to see uh, Ector's list here, because I also took uh, Stark Fealty to uh, the tournament. Uh, I think mine uh, was probably going to be quite different. So we got a Time of Plenty into a uh, Winter Festival. So this like Ashley is going for full on rush. Uh, Ashley has let Ector go first. Uh, unfortunately, the Winter Festival will not trigger because there is a summer plot revealed. And we're on to the first turn, Marshalling. Nice quick start there. So guys, if you want some more coverage of this, uh, obviously come back here every day. We'll have, uh, have pretty much one video a day from, uh, for the rest of this week and next week. <coughs> but also do check out the uh, White Walkers channel. They also had a, cha uh, a uh, camera there. They have started recording already. And um, so I started recording, started posting videos already. And also do check out the gaming hall. Uh, Liam's camera was all set up and uh, he recorded, I believe, most of the Swiss and a couple of games from the cut. So plenty of coverage. I will put links below to those two channels, so you can keep an eye out for that uh, on there. Uh, we do have three cameras in total, so um, a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of good games, a lot of uh, a lot of top European players. So uh, we had a second Great Hall played out, and both have been knelt. Filthy's been knelt. Rob Stark, I'm going to get here, and it is Rob Stark. He is now got a bodyguard. Um. Probably not the maybe not needed against Baratheon. Uh, Baratheon, especially crossing, probably not running Valor. And we have a brown played out. Uh, not looking like a fairly good start here. Looks like he's still got two gold left, I believe, or three gold left, probably. And we have um, Hodor played out. So there's an attacking Hodor as well because uh, brown is out, so you can uh, participate in. in to participate as an attacker, easy for me to say. We have a uh, Dragonstone port played out on the other side from Ashley. So has he got someone big? He could, be able to, he could easily get out um, King Rob at this point. King Bob, sorry. Or maybe Melisandre. I don't imagine he's going to be running um, Core Stannis because that is uh, that'd be a nombo, not be good. Um, with um, crossing, you want your all your character standing, so you can get your you can get your free challenges off. May have King stands though. The King's Raiders pops, and we have Melisandre bought into play for one goal. And you imagine she's going to kneel Rob here. Take time thinking about it, but you imagine it's it's got to be Rob, surely. I was going to nail Lowen. Interesting choice. And get deeper Melisandre. That's a very interesting choice. Dragonstone Faithful is knelt, and we have the City Watch brought in fully paid for. Firstly, I do like to ambush those guys in myself, but. Um, they're pretty thing better though. I haven't thought about barrel crossing with them, but they're actually pretty good in barrel crossing. Uh, yeah, be strength eight on the third challenge. Still strength six on by themselves on the second challenge isn't bad. 
And straight fire military in the first challenge would again not horrendous options there. So onto extra challenges now. He can win a military, but he'd have to really go in on it. And I imagine uh, Ashley would let it go unopposed. With what looks like no gold and um, filthy knelt. They ain't got to worry about a uh, winter is coming. I guess... So going by kneeling Lewin, you're looking at... He must be look, thinking about getting a, an unopposed intrigue on top of everything else. Um, obviously, it does depend what Exeter does here. Um, ooh, interesting. So Neelan gets Winterfell to reveal a frozen solid. Uh, he must really like his hand, because I think personally I'd have waited... Unless he is running a further north, which you don't tend to see anymore. Not since uh, we got out of core. And it's like we have a garlic first player token. <laughs> so Hector is having a think. And I think he is passing challenges, so we have an Intrigue, which is unopposed. And the Frozen Solid, that, well, potentially the Frozen Solid that was just pulled, is uh, taking his claim. So, this is where I think I would now rob, because uh, now Ashley's left himself in a bit of an awkward spot here, because he can't risk doing the military first. Second now, because you let it go unopposed, you kill the Woodfeld Stew and everyone in that stands, and then the power becomes hard to win. Whereas if you now go in for the power with Melisandre and uh, Moonboy, he nearly defends with everything and you lose. So that's why I think you've knelt Rob out, you could have uh, still. Probably could have um, started with the power. I don't know, you kind of probably want bus bumps for the draw as well. There's no point doing the military at this point. And I think unless you go all in on a power just for the draw, which is a bit of overkill really. I think I do think that was I, I do think that was a mistake. at the moment for Dom. Dom is 11 to Ashley and obviously uh, Hodor doesn't count so I think you just take Dom at this point. Take a 2 to nil power lead. And that's what exactly what's going to happen. Okay, so end of turn 1. I think if Ashley looks at that back he could have played that turn slightly differently. <laughs> yep, both just take a good for reserve. And what onto plex plots? We got a here to serve. Oh, he is running. Oh, Ashley is running Valor. Spicy. And we have a here to serve into a calling the banners. So, Hector Sensible here. He goes first. He picks Ashley to go first. So to to be go. So he, he picks Ashley's plot to go first. Then gains one extra gold. I say sensible. He might not need the money, but. Um, So, but Ashley's uh, Ashley's going first, so he's obviously going to pick the uh, here to serve to go. Uh, sorry, the call of the banners to go first, not to give him an extra gold. So uh, Ashley's plan must here be to um, to take away that bodyguard, and he must be looking to Valor in a minute. Get a small board out, let Rob go to town. Would be my guess. So Ashley only has free gold. And he is going to get rid of the bodyguard. Okay, 
We have a consolidation of power. Will he sacrifice Brown to stop it? Because otherwise, I think Lewin, the Winterfell Stewart, and a Bran. Yep, all three of them are going to be knelt. And the Winterfell Stewart, of course, gets the power. Okay. The only issue here, of course, is uh, Bran is currently immune to any valor because uh, Lewin's out. And uh, Lewin makes Bran immune to opposing, uh, opposing plots. So we have a uh, Dragonstone, uh, port, second Dragonstone port played out. And uh, we have a juice, card juice by three. We have five followers. He's got a new hold oh, This is really interesting that he's really. He's leaving, leaning Hodor and letting Rob stand. And putting a bodyguard on Mel. This, the, this is... I don't quite understand why he's letting Rob stand. Here's, of course, where uh, I love now Vector has a um, Jon Snow brings Jon Snow out, sacrifice the steward, and then uh, everything stands. So uh, we got a character coming out. Looks like that. Looks like that was five. Yep, Jon Snow. In fact, the exact <laughs> the exact card to beat the beat the Baron Eel. I uh, have a Milk and Crescent, which is a good choice. I have another bodyguard played out on Rob. And this is where Lewin starts, is really starting to, uh... Oh, we have a marriage pact on Mel. So this is, um... That's a really good turn there for Hector. Uh, he's going to be able to beat the Neil package. With, uh, thanks to Jon Snow. And now Mel is in a marriage pact. She can't participate in any challenges. And the downside is not likely to trigger because it's not likely that Melisandre is going to be leaving play. We have an entry for one from the fiery followers. Oh, so Hector's going to sacrifice this steward now. That's interesting. He must. Um, he must really like his hand towards do this. So um, that's going to be fully blocked. So we have a. And another marriage pact. I can't remember. Those are unique. There another marriage pact to put into hand. Um, now you can get away with doing the military because um, you don't overly care if um, if he lets it go through because uh, you know he's already had the one stand for the turn with Rob. And he's going to defend with Robin John Snow, looks of it. So going full out for the defence. And uh, gets a draw from Insight, as well as a renowned, thanks to Lewin. And their marriage pact is not unique, and there's a current, there's currently a little um, checking whether it's um, um, or well, it Ashley thought he could still um, attack with it. He just couldn't defend, but no, you can't initiate a challenge. Uh, good, nice little card for uh, melee as well. So he gets his un he, uh, so Ashley did an unopposed power challenge. We have an unopposed military coming back. We have an unopposed power coming back. And Ashley take Ashley's going to take dominance, putting him on four power to Ector's, I believe, four power. Yes. So, assumably, this turn, um, 
Ashy's going to pay a confiscation to get rid of the milk off. Um, would you risk taking the milk off Mr. Crescent? I think you do. And then uh, nail him to get rid of the marriage pact. I believe marriage pact is a condition. If not, then... Yes, it is. It's condition attachment. And it's terminal. So it's an interesting car. It seems to be a bit of a mix. You see some start players seem to absolutely love it. Some I'm, I didn't run it myself. Although it is a card that potentially could could work with what the theme that I'm trying to go with. I just didn't get enough practice in with it really to uh, what's warrant it. I also just like the idea of it. I, I know I want to marry off uh, the Stark children to the most horrendous people imaginable. Oh look, there's the mountain. Yes, yes, I was putting the marriage back in with the mountain. <laughs> Alright then. So into the third plot phase. Ashley's having a bit of a think here. Okay, plot is picked, and we have um, Nova Cause into Valor. So, Ashley, interesting. So, X has picked Ashley to go first. So, yep. Uh, and you probably should take the bodyguard, yep. And there's the crescent to go in. So, oh, I'm not sure that was the right time to do that now. I think you've got to get rid of that marriage pact because the inability to take part in challenges, um, especially with X having claim, is, is going to be pretty harsh. I guess you do kill Jon Snow, so that stops the stand on demand. There's the uh, Sherry Priestess, so uh, needing out both characters. And one gold left for Ashley. Let's see what Hector's going to put out, because he can, well, can basically put out any star character he wants right now. Uh, so Hector's economy is, he has no problems with the economy engine. You can just kneel with all four all four locations to get out fast, Eddie. Uh, we have Septimordine. So uh, she gives uh, Sans a plus two strength and uh, renowned, and gives Asher an intrigue icon and immune, uh, and it then becomes immune to opponents' plots. I like I like her a little bit more than Lewin because um, you know you, it's easier to get her all her abilities to trigger, but they're both pretty solid cards. And Hector is not marshalling anything else, so that was an interesting plot to play. We didn't have a lord in his hand, so we have an entry coming in from Hector, which is defended, and uh, King Rob is King Bob is taken out for claim. And some more econ. So Ector has no complaints about econ in this game. Uh, looks like Ashley just took, Ashley just took uh, dominance. So he's now on five power to Ector's four power. As all things back of Stark, this can always be a really bad matchup for um, for Barra. Just because that ability from uh, Rob to be able to stand everyone. We have trading with the Pantoshi into close call. So, uh, which brings back Jon Snow and draws a card for that. And Hector has been chosen as first player. 
So not a bad turn there for Hector really. It's a, always quite nice to play close call in into a trading, having all that extra money and a little extra draw to hopefully get out some pretty big characters. This game is um, really finely poised at this point with 5-4 uh, to Ashley. So another bodyguard played out in Rob. We have a King's Road. The King's Road is popped. And uh, Jon Snow is back out for free with the uh, two great halls. And we have Arya Stark played out. So uh, she has now got all three icons and is immune to opposing plots. And Hector is uh, putting all three icons, the other two icons on her. Will you play anything else out? Exus is having a little think here. And he's going to pass challenges. So we have uh, the Dragonstone Port Nelt to bring out Dragonstone Faithful. We have the um, Painted Table. So And King Bob has been brought onto the board. And two play Serene. So Hector's now got to be careful about doing a military. Also potentially a wildfire here to kill her off and uh, near whatever left is left. He's a potential, though obviously that would actually leave Hector with four characters still. So that might not be the best uh, best play at the moment. So we've got Intrigue from Hector, at which point uh, Ashley can't defend this if you want to steal three challenges back. And that goes unopposed. And a House Maester has taken this claim. So power stuffing Bob. Now uh, Shireen defends. It looks like Ashley now is trying to get is starting to give up on the um uh, is starting to give up on the idea of uh, getting all three challenges off. So an action to Neil to see a deep of Rob, I believe that was. A military from Jon Snow. I think you've got to let this go unopposed, unfortunately. Oh, he's going to defend with Bob. Interesting. So, Ashley passes challenges there. I think Hector here is. Uh, so there's a little debate here about whether, because because actually hasn't taken any challenges, whether there's an action window, and I I am pretty sure that if you um, if you just skip your challenges, there is no action window. So you, there's an action window before you choose to skip challenges. So you go, I have an action window. You have an action window. Then you go right challenges, no challenges. There's no more action windows. 
So whether Ector would actually would have stood everyone before Ashley challenges is another matter. So just getting a little ju judge over just as just to discuss this. And, that is, and yep, the judge uh, does it, said exactly what I, I've said. So Ashley gets um, power for dominance and a power for um, and a power for uh, off for the painter table. And it is one of those things. It, it can be. It's got, where something's got to be quite clear. Um, I've done it in one of one of my live streams where I could have waited till the third challenge to do an action, but I decided to do it just before the third challenge. Uh, just in case they didn't initiate a third challenge, they in the end they did, but if they hadn't, then obviously you lose the window, you lose the option to do an action. So we have a heads on spikes played into wardens of the uh, north. I assume there that X would either have uh, sacrificed Bran, having another one in hand, or Septimordine. We have a frozen solid. Taken as uh, for heads and spikes, which uh, I think Ashley would be kind of disappointed about and not disappointed about at all because the painted table probably would have been about to become frozen solid. So we have the red keep played out. So now Ashley's going to be plus two strength uh, in a power challenge. And Pylos is put out for free. <laughs> and Hector's now like, you just had to say that way, didn't you? Uh, the red keep and the painter table would both be um, very good choices at this point. But... Uh, Hector seems that type of guy. He's taking it in a stride and doesn't seem too too phased by that. But we have a marriage pack put on uh, King Bob, so he now can't participate in challenges. So yeah, as Ashley said, uh, King Bob's basically uh, uh, he's basically now got two Iron Thrones effectively for uh, for dominance. Um, that's a really good card to play against um, crossing decks. Uh, any actions? No. And actually, now physically can't do all three challenges. So, an entry coming in. How much does X care about his hand? And he's going to fully oppose it. And we have the Gates Windfall knelt, and he's going to reveal a card I can't see, but assumably it was a, cut, a start card. Uh, we've got a power of four, stealthing uh, Rob. And he is. Ooh, X is going aggressive. So um, defends with Bran, and then puts Rob into the challenge. And uh, Ector is going to be able to get a. I think that was an entry challenge. And now we're going to see. I I think he's got another Bran in hand, so I think he's going to potentially sacrifice Bran in a second to do a power. So mil unopposed military challenge. Sacrifice. Now the options here is you either sacrifice uh, Jon Snow himself, uh, Bran, or Septimore Dean. So uh, the odds are he's probably got another Bran in hand. So potentially sacrifice. You potentially sacrifice Bran. 
But he's going to go for Scepter Mordine. This is, which is brave because this is basically his only intrigue icon. Uh, especially as, yeah, because that Usher also then loses Asher's Intrigue icon. So now, assuming you do a milit a power stealth with Asher and Rob stealthing. Um, uh, stealth. Oh no, you're just going to do Rob, okay. Yeah, I think I might. So you probably should have gone for the unopposed there as well. But put Asher into the challenge. But Shireen, Shireen defends the unopposed. So uh, the paint table is knelt to gain another one, putting Ashley up to eight power. And Ector is currently on ten. Those marriage packs are doing some real work here for uh, for Ector. So um, Ashley's here is just checking what the um, what the wording is for the uh, for when these attachments come off. So obviously if Ector's here to play a Valor, then after the Valor goes off, any surviving characters potentially going to get uh, sacrificed, I believe. Would it work like jewelry? Well, this is an interaction I'm not haven't come across yet. have Valor played into uh, a Feast for Crows. Now you got to assume here Ash is not playing Confiscation otherwise he would have got rid of the Marriage Pack by now. So actually again just double checking the uh, ruling on how we killed at the same instant yeah. so I sacrificed one before the dead yeah so it's just saying that yeah he he sacrifices a cat so he basically when, if Bobby's chosen his cape well Bobby's going to have to die here and then he's going to sacrifice um, Bran from the marriage pact which I guess thematically means that um and Rob is going to be knelt for uh, Serene. I guess then for Matica, does that mean Bran and King Bob were uh, were both married to each other? Uh, Ashley's there. Things also put the characters in the wrong order as dead pile because really you want King Bob on the top. And looks like he's put uh, uh, Serene on top. So reducing by two, got Ki uh, King Bob's hunting party and a wildling scout. Lacking a power icon though. And Hector here, although he's only going to get two gold, is not lacking on uh, economy. So we have Filthy Nelt. And then Filthy is unknelt. So the Windfall Stewart comes into play. He is knelt, Filthy is knelt. And we have, I saw a lot of these on the day, so we have the um, Baron Loyalist, which um, 
I assume people are taking look at over Tumblestone Knights because they're loyal. So effectively it's the same cost if you nil fealty, but they just don't seem like a good card to me. So you have an entry coming in here from uh, Ashley. Which is going to go unopposed. And we have a Winterfell taken his claim. Which is interesting because he probably could have got him out. Oh, and fast Eddie. And Ashley very smartly there is passing challenges because obviously um, if he does a military now he's just going to kill someone and stand everyone up and then Rob's run out and trigger. So power is going to be unopposed. No claim though, just uh, unopposed. But does importantly stop Ashley from being able to draw. Military, which is defended. Uh, dominance here goes to Ashley, so he is about to get a four power here. So two from Feast of Crows, one from Winning Dom, one for the Painted Table. And he also he's up to twelve power. He's quite close to seeing this out. Um, Exer's still on ten. So despite the marriage pack after marriage pact in the uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, is really keeping hit, keeping himself in this game. But now we know this fast Eddie is in the other hand. Oh, and Hector had to um, confiscate his own marriage pact. <laughs> and we, yeah, so we have um, we, we have a clash uh, clash of kings into a uh, confiscation. So Ashley's going to go first, I believe. Try and see it out before Hector can win. He just needs free power, but I think that's easier said than done. So we have a Rose Road, and that's all he can play out. Ooh. Oh, will that be too little, too late? He can get up to eight on the power. And here comes Fast Eddie. Uh, deep for uh, Arya. Arya. And. Cat. Oh no. Oh. We've got ice on Rob. So we've got ice and Ashley's just taking that. Yes, and that's actually us. Can you use it on defence? Yes, you can. If you win a, a military challenge on defence, you can kill an opposing character. It is a very nasty card. So what's Ashley do here? So he can't do the military. Otherwise, he's just going to have uh, Melisandre killed. No, <laughs> he was <laughs> he was about to do the military there for five. Uh, Hector being very nice and just letting him read the card just to let him know what it does because that was practically suicide. So we have an entry coming in here from the Wildling Scout. Which goes unopposed. We have Claim, which is Lewin. Now, what he really needs here is to have a scene in flames in hand. Another copy of Fast Eddie. Seen in flames, and he's got seen in flames. So no brand around to stop the hand part. Oh, we got an Aya's gift. I think you have. To, you think you get rid of the Aria's gift. You nil Rob, and then you do a power challenge, stealthing fast Eddie, to win the game, don't you? Sacrifice Wildling Scout to give um, Melisandre stealth. Should be strength 6 on the power because of the red keep. Stealth fast Eddie. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's the game. with Because uh, of um, Clash of Kings. Or even now do the military. 
do the military, see if you get someone to kneel, and then sacrifice the Wilding Scout to give Melisandre stealth. The win is here, the win is on the table. What? No! No, Ashley, no! Oh, you had that, Ashley. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Hector's just remembered. It's a two claim military. It's basically a two claim power. So he, he has to defend this for seven. Oh no, Ashley. <laughs> you had it. Yep, extra defense for six. Which is going to be two power, putting him on to 12. You might as well do the military now, Ashley, because you're going to lose, it's going to be unopposed anyway. I think Ash, I think from the sounds that Ash, he's just realised he made the mistake. Yep, he's just saying he forgot to stealth, and that would have been it, that would have been game, he's realised. you got to feel for him. Uh, it's easy enough done. Uh, one of my opponents made a, a similar mistake um, in one of my uh, extend, uh, the uh, extended cuts games, and... Um, it cost him big. He knelt more characters he needed to, which still gave, gave me an opening to come in and win the game. Um, and then did his challenges back in the wrong order. But uh, yeah, you got to feel you got to feel for Ashley at this point. Can't even do the military because it's a stand, everyone. Uh, this is game. Hector's got this now. And uh, poor Ashley. Yeah. And he passes challenges. So we're going to lose an unopposed power challenge from the uh, Bear Island Loyalist. And then an unopposed military from Asher stealthing past the. Uh, yeah, the uh, King's Hunting Party, and that'd be game. And so Ashley realising his mistake is just, just too late, unfortunately. And that is game. So, well done to both of the guys there. Could get cracking game. Some interesting cards you don't normally see. And, guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, do come back tomorrow. We have the round three of Swiss. Uh, and uh, please do check out the White Walkers channel for uh, other games from the European Championships. But as always guys, it has been emotional.